Welcome back to Crime After Crime. I'm John Lorden. And I am Danielle Holland. And Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everyone. Wow. These are, these are fireworks for anyone that's looking in the video. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Hands. Firework yeah, hands. Firework hands. <laughs> uh, we got out of, you know, um, I was talking about 2021 on a call with some other people. And we were talking about how in some ways it felt like just an extension, like it was 2020 point yeah. version two like you know mm -hmm. that's exactly <laughs> um, what it felt like it did and i'm hoping that 2022 really feels like a new and different year for all of you guys and myself but i'm wishing it for you guys as well man um, but like hearing it said out loud though i have my doubts because it's like 2022 i know i know, know. 2020 <laughs> it's, it's making, two. Me, it's making yeah. me a little nervous <laughs> again i'm back we can't get out of it i'm, I'm already <laughs> looking forward not. to 2030 like i just yeah. want to get out of this <laughs> mm -hmm. saying 2020 yep um 2k 22 yeah there's just there's no way i just yeah we just we need more time to pass but yep. We're getting there. 2022, <laughs> a whole new year, another year of crime after crime. Thank you guys for coming along with us. Uh, we need to do the results from the last episode. Did you guys enjoy last episode as much as we did? I loved the last episode. I really hope everyone else enjoyed it. That was hands down one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, I say that every yeah. single time, but man, those it were good, good stories. It was good. We had good stuff. Uh, if you missed it, check it out. It was the real life Grinch episode. Danielle told the story of a daring and somewhat cartoony art heist mm -hmm. where the stolen paintings were later returned by the thief after his heart grew three sizes that day. And I told the story of a man who can never have all his cash stolen. The holiday <laughs> Jamaican home invasion of country megastar, Johnny Cash. How did it play out, Danielle? All right, it played out exactly like I thought it would, you guys. <laughs> John's... You sound disappointed, hold on. What? <laughs> What is this? You've come back with a vengeance. I mean, over and over again. I haven't won in so many episodes at this point, but I will say I knew that was going to happen. I didn't even know that Johnny Cash story at all. Never heard of it before. Plus, it's just Johnny Cash. Like, there was no way I was going to beat that. So, Johnny as Cash. I'm sure you guys know at this point, on the website, I received 37% of the vote and John 63%. On Twitter, I received 40% of the votes and John 60%. So he whooped me again. Thank you, voters. Very, very deserving, though. That was such a great story. I like kept saying the whole night, I would just like laugh out loud. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I'm just envisioning the turkey just like Being slide under, under the, the door. door. I know. <laughs> it was too good. It was a good one. <laughs> it was a good one. Um, I've had the cup here so long, I've actually written my name on the bottom of it in permanent marker, Danielle. So when you do get it back... <laughs> I know. It's never going to happen at this point. I, I put John 2021, the run of 2021. <laughs> Man, okay, but if you're going to keep that cup, at least let me borrow the Lakuchi mug. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. I've been using the Lakuchi mug on the live streams. Uh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love that mug. All right. Well, today we've got another topic for you guys. Uh, we are talking about the world's worst roommate. And of course, with that, we want to get you warmed up for it. Uh, according to a 2018 Pew Research study, one in three adults lives with another adult roommate, someone that is not a romantic partner or a college student. That was really shocking to me. Really was. Yeah. But Realtor Magazine points out that those living with their friends or family, about 32% of the survey population, and people that live with coworkers, about 30%, were the most likely to be happy with their roommates. So Danielle, 62%, they're perfectly happy. Oh, yeah. But we're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about that remaining 38%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those other ones aren't interesting enough. <laughs> That's right. We're, we're drilling down. Uh, about 5% of that 38%, they use Craigslist to find a roommate. Let me just stop the show here and say, do not do that. No. Don't you, don't you watch true crime shows, folks? You can't use Craigslist like that. <laughs> You cannot. I don't trust anything on Craigslist. I go there for entertainment purposes only. Goodness. And the <laughs> remaining 33%, they find all these other ways to bring strangers into their lives and homes. I feel like they're just determined <laughs> to make <laughs> chaos happen. Yep. The researchers also wanted to find out what was the top point of tension among people with roommates. The top point of tension, starting in the number nine position, 
roommate's financial instability. And that had only about 3.3% of the respondents answer that. And in number eight, significant others staying over. Mm -hmm. The walls can never be thick enough for that, Danielle. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> uh, I remember once I lived in a, it was one of the first homes when I moved out. It was a mobile home. And man, those walls, I mean, it was paper thin. Paper thin. You could hear <laughs> everything. Bunch of young guys living together. It was not good. It was not oh, good. No. <laughs> uh, in number seven, overuse of shared spaces. In number six, respecting quiet hours. Danielle needs her quiet time. I do. That, that's <laughs> All why she. The time. Yeah, that's why she goes to a hotel to to record crime after crime. I know. I don't even put music on. I just sit here in silence when I'm getting ready. I do. It's great. <laughs> she has to prepare because then she's going to be bombarded by yes. Johnisms for hours at a time. <laughs> Uh, number five, having too many guests over or having guests over too frequently. Big problem. Mm -hmm. Now, this one would probably be my biggest. Number four, violating personal space and alone time. I'd go crazy in a heartbeat. Did you ever have roommates, Danielle? Nope. No. And this is exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> number well, four least, is the reason <laughs> you know your limits you know your limits uh number three communication danielle simple communication did you say something uh, it did not get off <laughs> in the number two spot surprisingly with only nine percent of the respondents rent i know like nine percent i i would thought that that should have been 30 percent. i would imagine absolutely at least uh, like I, I think that that conversation would come up so much, but obviously mm -hmm. only 9% of them far above all those other issues, grabbing a whopping 41.2% was keeping shared spaces clean. Mm -hmm. And that is why Danielle, my last roommate, yep. he was a total neat freak, but you know what I realized that probably means that he was complaining about me. Well, did you tech? The social media account, John? Because apparently, 9% <laughs> of these surveyors found out that their roommates were complaining about them on social media. Yeah, uh, it was... That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it was long enough ago. Um, I mean, Danielle, I've been married 19 <laughs> years at this point. Uh, social media wasn't really... It was, I mean, baby. It was in its infancy. Uh, so I couldn't check his social media. But Probably a good thing, just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I do wonder... If uh, mm. that's going to come up in my story. Hmm. Yeah. Hint, hint. While today's stories are certainly going to touch on some or maybe even all of these themes, we're also adding criminality to the mix. It's time for our first story about the world's worst roommate told by the amazingly talented and roommateless Danielle Allen. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said, I've never actually had a roommate before. I enjoy my solitude very much, okay? Mm -hmm. And the thought of living with someone else other than family, sometimes even family, makes my hair stand up. <laughs> I'm just I'm just being real honest, you know? I grew up with, you know, mom, sisters galore. Ugh, I had enough of it then. So from my perspective, pretty much any roommate sounds like a horror. So when I was going through this, I was like, you know, I wonder how I'm gonna react to these different stories. But through all of the stories that I looked into, this horrified me the most. By far the worst roommate I've ever read about. Okay. So, March 2017, 31-year-old Alex Miller was struggling to keep afloat in her two-bedroom apartment in the neighborhood of Chestnut Hill in Philly. She worked two part-time jobs, one at a local juice bar, another one at a law firm, just like filing paperwork. But recent events put her in a bit of a pinch. Rent at her apartment was obviously very high with a roommate, the one that she had, it was manageable until all of a sudden her roommate had to move out, leaving her to carry every single one of the bills. That's actually, I think, another one of my nightmares. I would feel like all of a sudden my roommate would be like, mm, <clears throat> never mind, bye. Yeah, it happens. That's horrifying. Sure. Yeah. And to top it off, when all of this is happening, she had a lease renewal coming up. And so you can imagine she's in this position, you know, she doesn't want to have to leave. That's awful. Wouldn't want to have to move out. But also, how are you going to find another roommate that fast? Yeah. So. Craigslist. She, she put an ad out on Craigslist. No. Oh, Danielle, no. Yeah. Really? 
Yeah, she did. She put an ad out on Craigslist in hopes that she could find the perfect roommate from all of the, you know, all I'm the gonna, great choices. All on the, Craigslist. <laughs> I was tr- I was racking my brain to try to find a, a nice way to say it, but yes. <laughs> She's hoping she could find the perfect roommate to fill the now empty bedroom. Within two weeks, she was reached out to by a man named Jed Creek. Okay. Jed claimed to be a well-off lawyer from New York. He needed a place in Philly to stay so that he could take care of some family business. He explained to her that his mother was really old, had a hard time taking care of herself. She was also ill. And his brother was also dealing with hepatitis C. Whoa. So he needed to be there for his family and so he said that he had already tried with no luck on many other ads which you know maybe should have been a little bit of a red flag there mm-hmm. um and he really hoped this one was going to work out and he actually backed himself up a lot he spoke very highly of his education he went to georgetown university for history and he got his law degree from the university of miami he seemed super you know put together and in Alex's eyes this is perfect she worked in a law firm you know she wasn't a lawyer but she had some knowledge so they'd be able to share that at least Jed also had an older border collie named Zachary that he was going to bring with him and she had a black lab that was also older they could give each other company he seemed professional responsible so this sounds like the start of a um, (laughs) holiday romance story or something yes it does it doesn't end like that (laughs) oh Uh, boy oh really (laughs) Imagine that. (laughs) On this show? Yeah, I know. It's confusing. (laughs) So they decided at this point to meet at Alex's apartment to see if he would be a good fit. They wanted to meet each other in person. You know, got to do a vibe check. Mm -hmm. So after hours of checking out the home, introducing the dogs to make sure that was also a good fit, they had tons of conversations about their own personal interests and their daily routines. They decided this was a great match. Jed was going to move in. And he wanted to move in like real dang fast. So as they were sitting there, he actually pulled out a check, said, I want to move in right now, immediately made it out for $800 with the apartment listed as his current address. Uh, That's that's a little forward, I think, but okay. (laughs) Yeah. And said, I'll be back later tonight. Sure enough, Judd showed back up with six rather large Tupperware totes. Okay. A surprise cat named Abigail. Uh-oh. He hadn't told her about Abigail. This sounds like me. Okay. This sounds like me when I'm like, Yeah, oh. exactly. I'm bringing 47 <laughs> animals with me. <laughs> I may have done something today. We need to drive an hour away to rescue kittens. <laughs> there may be seven. <laughs> yes. So he had surprise cat Abigail. Okay. And despite telling Alex that he had everything that he needed in terms of furniture, he didn't need a thing. because She was, you know, trying to be very kind. He didn't come with anything. Other than these six totes, not a mattress, nothing. Did did the check go through, Danielle? And we're gonna find out well, that uh, he moves all his stuff in, and then we got a rubber check. So, well, this moment she panicked a bit because yeah. he kind of like threw a pile of comforters and blankets down in the corner of the room, and like made himself at home. And she's thinking to herself, "What if this is just all a scam?" Because it was very last minute. She didn't have time to put the check in the bank. Uh, So she's like, what if this doesn't clear? I haven't thought this through. It's a horrible decision. But she's also trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I think she's really thinking, maybe this is just his preference, you know? (laughs) Well, and (laughs) you think it's going to solve your problem, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. honestly, she's looking for a solution. He's looking like the solution. Like, you want that to work out. Yeah, it was a big pressure moment. You know, she's thinking, I won't have somewhere to live. If I don't do this, I can't afford this by myself. But thankfully, the following day, the check cleared. So she's, you know, oh, my goodness, I was just being paranoid. Everything's fine. He's a little he's a little strange, but everything's okay. And over the next couple of days, they seem to work out great together as roommates. They spent almost every single night sipping on wine, watching TV, talking into the early morning hours. She was getting like relationship advice from him and he was talking about his life. He kept things clean, which we learned is very important. Yeah. (laughs) He minded his business. Another very important thing. (laughs) Mm. And he also took really good care of his animals which that would be high up on my list. If I had a roommate and they had an animal, if they didn't take care of their animal, I would lose my mind in a heartbeat. Yeah. But 
on the 11th day of staying with Alex, they had a strange interaction that kind of took her off guard a little bit. Alex pulled out the first kind of like utility bill situation okay. and asked him to pay his half. She thought she'd calculated everything correctly for the you know correct amount of days that he'd been there so far. But he pointed out that, you know, no, what you're asking me to pay includes days before I was even here. Okay. And without her even really being able to say anything, he immediately just says, oh, but we can handle this in court if you'd prefer. <laughs> just like zero to 100 immediately. Wow. Okay. I got to remember that. I got to remember to throw that one around. That's pretty funny. <laughs> like the can second you, you have me? any sort of inconvenience. We can go right. to court. <laughs> yeah. Can you pass me the pepper, please? Or, hey, we can handle this in court. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look, I've got the time. Wow. So, okay. of course, Alex thinks this is pretty out of left field. She's yeah. not pushed him. She's not threatened Jed. So she thought, you know, if he's being this adamant about it, like he's getting this upset, she's like, I must have really gotten my dates wrong. I messed something up. You know, she's probably also thinking, I can't afford to lose this roommate. So she kind of just let it go. Mm -hmm. okay. And Jed took this inch and went multiple miles with it. Despite her assumptions that Jed was in an office all day, you know, being a lawyer, doing all those things, she began to hear other residents claim that he was just kind of wandering around the apartment grounds all day. He never really left, so she's she's starting to get an even weirder vibe from him. And then one day, Alex came home to the living room entirely dark. She opens up her door, walks in, nothing, hits the light switch. She's like, huh. This is weird. Upon further inspection, she realized that for some reason, Jed had taken all the light bulbs out of the living room and put them in all of his lamps in his own room. <laughs> so again, she's like, okay, weird, <laughs> but we're we're gonna keep we're gonna keep rolling. Okay. And then a couple of days later, she arrives home and she's like, oh, strange. Could have swore I had dining room chairs at my table. What? Where did they go? Okay. So yet again, when she went to go and question Jed about this, she found that he had taken them and made himself a makeshift desk in his bedroom and said he had no intentions of putting them back. He made a makeshift desk out of dining room chairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So he's taken all the light bulbs, taken yeah. the chairs, just yeah. trying to already take her to court. <laughs> <laughs> Despite his own very odd behavior, he then began to accuse Alex of all sorts of things using legal mumbo jumbo, which always ended in him somehow not owing any rent. He started to claim that the arguments that he actually started with her were actually her fault and that she was, and I quote, breaking the covenant of quiet enjoyment. Uh, well, I mean, this sounds like it's gone to like, like he's pushed it into marriage territory. Absolutely. <laughs> this sounds mm -hmm. like they've been married for like eight years. And he's like, like we, need a, we need a divorce right now. Exactly. But he's been there a matter yeah. of days. <laughs> I know. And she's just, you know, breaking the covenant of quiet enjoyment over there. Hmm. And then another day he found a cigarette in the toilet, which, you know, I wouldn't, you know, personally be too pleased about. But he said yeah. at this point that she should know that doing that breached the warranty of habitability. And so, therefore, he he didn't have to pay his dues that month. Whoa. And this continued over and over with issues that could have been handled with a conversation. Alex, at this point, hadn't received a good bit of rent from him, no payments for utilities, and every single day he was finding these issues. So she started confiding in her mom about this, saying, I have no clue what to do. She felt stuck in the situation. He said he was a lawyer so he used this legal talk all the time that was horrifying half the time she didn't know what it meant so alex's mom was like you know what there's something wrong about this i'm gonna go off on my own and do a search about this man whoa, whoa wait wait hold on a second so she let this guy in her house found him on the internet on craigslist mm -hmm. but she hadn't yeah. searched his name nope <gasps> Well, I mean, don't use Craigslist to tips do this. 101. Yeah, but if you're gonna use Craigslist, like Google if you're gonna, use, yeah, if you're gonna use the internet, fully use the internet. Like oh, yeah. you know, check them out. Wow. Okay. All right. What are my what are mom find? Jed Creek. Yeah. Doesn't exist. Okay. 
The man that had been living with Alex this entire time was actually a man named Jameson Bachman. <laughs> he didn't have a mom nearby that was ill and old or a sick brother. And this was definitely not the first time that he had done something like this. Multiple articles about this man began to pop up left and right with similar horror stories. And one woman in particular was desperate to stop him. So back in 2012, a woman named Melissa Frost had moved him into her home. He told Melissa a spiel just like he told Alex. Oh but this God. time he said, my home in New York, it's been entirely destroyed by Hurricane Sandy. I have a job to do. I'm desperate for a place to stay. He convinced her he was this good, stable man with a good job. He had all this educational backing. He was a lawyer. He really just needed, you know, someone to help him for a second and get back up on his feet. But within months, Melissa said that it felt like they were at war. Similar to Alex, after the first rent payment, he found a reason every single month to not to pay not up. Pay. Yeah. It could have been a dirty dish that sat in the sink too long. One of his personal belongings was moved and he didn't like it. A day went by without her vacuuming. Whatever he could do to fit into those weird legal claims mm -hmm. to make it sound like he had been made uncomfortable in his own home, he ran with it. And the second Melissa would confront him about it, all hell would break loose. He would lock himself in his room. She said it seemed like he knew that if he left, she would immediately change the locks on the doors. He's and would a squatter, not let him Danielle. Back in. He's a so, squatter. Yep, so he would lock himself down yeah. And never leave. Yeah. There was actually another really scary instance when he almost pushed her down the stairs backwards because she touched his microwave. Wow. Wow. This, he had, he's probably been doing this since 2008, you realize, because that's oh, when that whole thing started kicking up. Like, oh, just wait. Around the real estate crash in 08. That's when people started doing these squatting scams where like just by, from their, them being there, they were like essentially taking ownership of the property. We almost got stuck in a bad real estate deal oh, no. trying to buy a house where they were trying to do that. They were oh. essentially trying to get someone to sign for the house, but they were never going to yeah. move out of it. Um, wow. Wow. That's wow, horrible. Wow. But yeah. you know, when he, when he almost pushed her down the stairs, thankfully someone came in and saw and mm -hmm. called police to intervene. Now, while they were on scene, Again, he, man, he could work a situation. While they were on scene and the chaos of everything, one of his cats actually got out and went missing, right? So he immediately told Melissa, and I quote, you are the proximate cause of my cat's disappearance and presumed death. Do not communicate with me again unless it's through your attorney. Cat was probably a prop. Probably wasn't even his cat. Cat oh, found on the way in. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's like, that, oh, that's a stray cat. I'm going to claim that as mine. What a Picked it up off the street while he's yeah. walking in the door. Uh -huh. Yeah. He destroyed her floors. He clogged all of her toilets because he had a nasty habit of dumping all of the cat litter in the toilets. Oh, yeah. definitely not a cat owner. Kicked down multiple doors out of anger and slowly started taking over this woman's entire home. So it got to the point where she said, you know what? I don't care what I lose out on. I will literally pay you back every penny you've paid me, which wasn't a lot, to get him out of the home. She's like, I will literally pay you to leave. Yeah. He laughed at her and said, again, I quote, you don't have this house anymore. This is my house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine? No. And I've actually covered cases like this on my channel, and I feel like I've had so many commenters be like, how do you just let someone take over your house? And I'm like, you don't let someone. Like, they do very scary things to get to that situation. Right, right. That's horrifying. Yeah. So Alex, obviously, reading all this information online that she would have known had she done a very quick Google search, she was shocked at the resemblance and also the possibility of where her situation could lead if she didn't do something about it. Because she was really just in the beginning stages of his plans that he had. Right. So she ended up reaching out to Melissa for help and found out that she had been gathering victims for years. There were well over a dozen if not two dozen other people that had gone through the exact same thing. He even did this to a school. <laughs> what? Tried to occupy the school? <laughs> so, well, so in 2005, he ended up being hired to teach at Thornton Donovan School, and they placed him in an apartment uh, basically near the school where he oh. 
could make himself at home. And while he was there, he was bragging to everyone, all the other employees. He was like, you know, I'm so well loved here. This school has already told me they're going to make me the next headmaster. I'm the best thing since sliced bread. But the following year in 2006, he was informed he would not be teaching there ever again. Yeah. Yeah. And as a form of protest, he refused to leave the apartment they supplied him with. Mm -hmm. Like, absolutely refused to leave. He had to forcibly be removed two months later. So, if, I mean, think about it, Daniel. If he makes each of those situations stretch out for four months, you know, like maybe three or four months, you could probably do that before you get kicked out for some reason. Or maybe it gets so bad that you don't even like being there anymore. He's only paying like three months rent per year. Mm-hmm. Wait like till you hear about Arlene. Oh, uh, <laughs> what about Arlene? Yeah. So after he was kicked out of the tool, the tool, the school in 2006, he moved in with a woman named Arlene in Queens. Okay. He stayed there for four years. What? And only paid one month's rent. <laughs> she was so scared that if she told him to leave, something would happen to her. And then she got even more scared, well, not even more scared, but she was also scared that if she kicked him out, that this man would then go after her landlord who also lived in the building sure. and would end up, basically she felt she was gonna pass him on to someone else. Yeah. And yeah. she was scared that because of that, she would end up being kicked out of her home. Mm. So he managed to do this for four years to her. That's insane. That's insane. Now, she, eventually snapped like lost her mind on him i don't blame her and he got so angry he grabbed her by the throat whoa so she obviously filed protection orders against him and evicted him okay but it's it's Took jameson so yeah. he said how can i get her back he loved to use his legal knowledge so he ended up falsely accusing her of coming at him with a knife <sighs> do you know what happened she was arrested and she was forbidden to ever go back to her apartment and they let him stay there. He took over her whole apartment and dropped all of her cats off at a kill shelter. Oh my God. He's evil. Wow. It was so horrible for her. She lost so much. There was another woman that he stayed with and she attempted to sue Jameson for the $36,000 he owed her. And he represented himself and straight up said that he was countersuing her because she gave him herpes what? which also was not true oh i mean there were so many times where all these people also confronted him saying you know he destroyed my apartment he put cat litter down the drain and i think his quote every time was last time i che checked that's where s-h-i-t is supposed to go <laughs> like he just had an answer for everything wow in 2015, he was thrown out of a home for walking around casually with a baseball bat at all times. Uh, and then just months before he ended up with Alex, he was kicked out of a home, a man's home, within a week after he tried to attack the man with a leg of a coffee table. So armed with this information, Jameson was asked to leave Alex's home by his real name. Like Alex's mom walked in and was like, all right, Jameson. <laughs> yeah. You need yeah. to leave. And he did look shocked that his cover was blown, but for like two seconds. And then he immediately refused. He said he wasn't going anywhere. So at this point, Alex was like, you know what? I'm going to write up a letter using my job's letterhead demanding that he leave. She, you know, said that she was going to talk to the police about everything that he had put her through, all of those disputes, as well as previous tenants that he had lived with. He still refused. This didn't phase him at all. So she said, you know what I'm going to do? And this was a little, this was a little brave, but she was like, I'm going to throw a party that makes him so mad that he leaves. So she decided she was going to do all the things he hated. Okay. She's like, I'm reversing this. I'm going to be the bad roommate. Right. He hated rap music. So she had rap blasting all hours into the night. The drink of choice was Jameson whiskey. And, yeah. you know, she's going offering him that. She took Melissa Frost's picture and taped it all over the apartment. <laughs> she was basically trying to show him, you know, like, I know what you did. I know who you are. And I'm going to do everything I can to piss you off to get you to leave, just like you've tried to do to everyone else. So he responded in, you know, the most adult way possible by dumping Abigail's cat litter into the toilet. 
And this led to an argument over the next couple of days. I know that Alex's friends tried to get her to leave the apartment because they were worried about his response. Yeah. But she said, no, I'm not leaving. This is my home. I'm staying here. And unfortunately, once she was alone, he came for her. He grabbed her by the neck. I mean, panned her in the corner of a bathroom and then ultimately ended up stabbing her in the leg. Whoa. Dang. Yeah. What the so that next morning, Jameson was arrested and he was charged with aggravated assault. And Alex immediately got a protection order because she knew that he likely would turn around try to blame her for something to take over her apartment. And she right. said, that's not going to happen to me. Uh, Zachary, his dog, was placed in a new home. Alex got the judge's permission, said, this is not right, this man. We can't do this. So Zachary was taken. And they ended up setting up a time to give all of his belongings back near a local precinct because his brother, Harry, ended up immediately bailing him out. So okay. they met at this local precinct, handed all six of his totes back to him, uh, gave him Abigail the cat back. I don't know why they didn't rehome Abigail. Um, and then told him that Zachary had been given to a better home. And as soon as they did that, he looked Alex straight in the eyes and said, you're dead. You're dead. So Alex turned around, walked into the precinct, <laughs> and reported him for violating the protection order. Uh. So, yet again... I mean, she played dirty. She was getting it. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, she was. Yeah. So he was arrested again <laughs> and wow. his cat was taken to a local shelter, ended up being put immediately into a foster home. And the second he found this out when he was in jail, he was so much more infuriated. So for the second time, he begged his brother, Harry, to bail him out. He was like, I've got to find my cat. I need to get my cat back. So not worried about the fact that he had just stabbed a woman. Right. Right. But he had to get his cat back. So after a little bit of convincing, on October 28th, 2017, Jameson was released thanks to his brother, something that unfortunately Harry never should have done. So after leaving, Jameson tried to ask Harry if he would take him in. (laughs) Because at this point, I know, he had nobody, he had nowhere to go, but even his own brother, Harry, said, absolutely not. He had roomed with him a few times. I think even his mother wanted absolutely nothing to do with him. Um, Didn't want him to come up to New York where they were. So Jameson set off on his own to try to get his cat back and figure out a place to live. And I believe he had originally planned on getting an Airbnb. So... Harry thought he wasn't going to hear from his brother again until he needed to be bailed out. And all of Jameson's roommates held their breath, scared that he was going to show up at their door. And sure enough, Jameson had pretty awful plans. So later that night, after bailing out his brother and refusing to take him in, Harry was supposed to meet with his wife, Caroline, in upstate New York. And he didn't show up. So officers went to the family home to do a wellness check and discovered a trail of blood that led to the body of Harry Bachman in the basement. Whoa. What the heck? Are you kidding me? A very abrupt turn. The dude Her- killed his brother? The dude that killed bailed him his out? his brother because he would not let him stay with him. <sighs> Caroline immediately tipped authorities off to this, though. They're like, Jameson did this. Yeah. You know, he is such a, he's trouble. And so they ended up finding him only a few miles down the road in a hotel, seemingly not worried that he'd be caught at all. Uh, They did a very quick canvas of the area. They were able to find the car that he was in. It was still filled with bloody towels that he had used to clean himself up. Um, So 1030 that night, SWAT team burst into room 102 at the hotel and they arrested him on the spot for the murder of his own brother. That guy is not okay. So there's actually a long string of history that led him to this point. So he was raised in Elkins Park in northern Philly in a beautiful, extravagant home, really well off family i was gonna say jameson bachman like just Mm -hmm. listen to that name like i was wondering about that when he first said it. i was like wow that sounds like he's you know from an exact family wow well unfortunately his parents are said to have doted on him to the point that he believed he could do no wrong Mm. friends of his that grew up with him said it always made them so uncomfortable like it didn't even feel 
real. They felt like they were playing a part, like pinching his cheeks and kissing him and telling him he's the best thing that ever happened to this world. And as a kid, psychologically, that messed him up. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. they thought they were doing something good, but instead they were teaching him, you know, you are the, the end all be all to everything. Yeah. There's, yeah. you know, and he was also held to really extreme standards. He was expected to be this really successful golden child. But then his brother, Harry, turned out to be more successful than him. Uh, wow. And he kind of began to lose it a bit. And it didn't help that he had a really unhealthy obsession from a young child, probably because of the way he was being raised with competition and winning things no matter the cost. Yeah, He felt like he had to be the top no matter what it meant. It was all about the fight. It was all about the control and saying that he won more than anything else because he wanted to be doted on, you know? Yep. But unfortunately, there was also another moment that possibly was the breaking point. He already was struggling psychologically, had this really big issue in his head with this false perspective. So he was in college in 1975, and he ended up witnessing a man be beheaded in front of him at a frat house. Whoa, jeez. Yeah. I mean, he had gr his grandfather was apparently involved in law. Like, he knew he wanted to be involved in law from a really young age because his grandfather would tell him about all these different crimes. Like, it was something he'd always grown up being, you know, interested in and passionate about. But seeing this, like, snapped something in his brain. And after this, he quite literally disappeared for two decades. What was what was the event? Why was it at a frat house? What was So I couldn't get a lot of detail about it. He wasn't okay. in this frat house. I know he was just there with a couple of friends. And I, I can't remember if it was like a one off random just like attack, like a yeah. victim of opportunity type of situation, but one of the guys in the frat had his throat slit. And Whoa. like in front Whoa. of everyone, this guy ran up and did it and then ran off. So yeah, that's very traumatizing. And so he was never the same. And I don't think anyone really offered to get him any help after that. Um, I think that he did see a therapist, psychologist, like the whole, or psychiatrist, the whole nine yards. Um, and he ended up disappearing after that for two decades. After this, he started talking all about like Israel and attacks and, you know, I mean, really was like, focused on these scary things that he kept claiming were going to happen. And there are rumors that after this, he did all sorts of things. He did, in fact, spend time in Israel. Uh, but I don't think that he ever really got his legs back underneath of him. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got all this trauma happening. And then he's also got this idea that he's superior. <laughs> so 20 years after the incident, he just shows up again randomly in town. Like his old best friend's doorstep, just like, hi. Hi. <laughs> been 20 years but here i am again um and this friend is like you know what i've, I've got to help him and so this is actually where the whole nightmare roommate thing began is when he came back to town after 20 years so he ended up staying with this friend and i don't know exactly what happened but i know that he made his friend's wife incredibly uncomfortable yeah like incredibly uncomfortable so he was very quickly kicked out and he also just totally tried to sabotage his friend's business. The superior thing again, I guess this friend was like, you know what, I need to help you out more. I'll get you a job so that then you can get your own place. And this guy ran a whole bunch of red, hot, and blue restaurants. Mm -hmm. So he said, look, I will go ahead and immediately make you a manager. Like, I know you can do this. You're super smart. Um, so you're just going to be a manager. Well, Jameson showed up the first day in a suit and tie saying that he was a consultant that was there to restore the restaurant because it had been run so horribly. <laughs> wow. And his friend's like, you're joking right now. <laughs> so he was fired and kicked out. So I think between his upbringing as a child and the trauma that he went through, he likely had some sort of mental break, a false perspective of reality, and just totally lost it. It was never ever about money for him, really. Yeah, no. It wasn't a scam like of, you know, I don't want to have to pay or getting a free place to live. Mm -hmm. uh, it was about showing he was smarter. It was about showing he was more capable, tricking people into believing that he was something that he actually was never able to accomplish. He failed his bar exam, unfortunately, yeah. and then never took it again, refused mm. to take it again. Uh, and he wanted people to continue treating him the way he'd always been treated by family as if he was entitled to 
everything. Right. And he could do no wrong. Now, Alex eventually said that in a way she feels super guilty because she felt like in some way she caused the death of Harry, his brother. She felt like if she hadn't pushed him so far and, you know, obviously in no way, shape or form was this her fault. No. This is Jameson's actions. And unfortunately, I think that every single person he ever roomed with is so lucky that they walked away. Yeah. Because yeah. if it wasn't Harry, it was going to be someone else. It I seems like think, this was the end. Yeah. yeah. It seems like that was an inevitable way for mm -hmm. this to go. Because Absolutely. even if he was getting away with these situations, there there would probably be a pattern of escalation. And it sounds mm -hmm. like there was. Like, you know, we have yep. these attacks that are happening against the women, and then the attacks are getting more and more serious. And then, unfortunately, he takes his brother's life. Wow. Wow. Well, I think it had a lot to do with the fact that he was finally head to head with this woman who was not scared to take him on. And mm -hmm. was acting, I mean, two steps ahead of him. Right. You know, she's like, let's meet at the precinct. I know you're going to mess up. So I'm going to turn around and get you arrested right right away again. Like she yeah. was, you know, two steps ahead. And I think that made him panic. And then he lost his animals, which, I mean, he's an awful person. But I think to him, emotionally, that was probably the only connection he had. Oh, yeah. To yeah, anything. The only, only the sense only of. The only positive relationship. Right. Or so, unconditional love. or Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. that probably totally tipped him over the edge. And then I think his brother was just the icing on the cake. His brother said, no, I'm not taking you in. I'm done with it. And he, I think at that point, realized he wasn't tricking anyone anymore. He had failed at what he thought he was supposed to be doing. And I think it just, it was awful. Every single person that yeah. lived with him is so lucky to be alive after this. And he managed to do this for so long. Yeah. Shout out to New York Magazine and Philadelphia Inquirer. There's so many interesting articles about this and testimonials from people who went through it. Well, he wanted Ooh. free rent and mm -hmm. sounds like he has it. I'm sure he's uh, serving a life sentence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He unfortunately um, ended his own life in jail. Oh, he did. Oh. I don't even think he fully made it to his trial. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. There was a lot going on there, a lot. Yeah. But that yeah. level, I'm telling you, some that level of intelligence, like mixed with crime, is the scariest thing to me. It, it is, yeah. And to think of just the missed opportunities mm -hmm. of, you know, this guy had access to education, access yeah. to resources early on, and you know, so yeah, you don't pass the bar on your first try. So what? Mm -hmm. There, that happens to a ton of lawyers. It's, it's like everybody. <laughs> yeah, and they go and they try again, yeah. and then they get it, and then they're able to have fruitful careers and make their own money and not mm -hmm. have to be in these situations. But it was almost like he was seeking those out. There was something about the trauma he was causing other yeah. people that it must have he felt was like. He off of it. Yeah. But it also must have felt like justified. Like, well, mm -hmm. other people have hurt me so much. I get to do this. Like mm -hmm. I, I get this response or I'm able to do this for the rest yeah. of my life. Yeah. And it's... I don't even, I don't even think he, he went to law school late too. Like he didn't, yeah. I think he didn't graduate till he was like 45. Wow. So, wow. I mean, if you're going to go to the trouble of that, like, I wish you would have, I don't know, but I think yeah. mentally there was just a lot, a yeah. lot happening. So, well, Danielle, I know I've been on a tear, but man, you have, you've launched a missile at me uh, with this one. That is That's horrifying. And it's terrible. not just a roommate to one person, that's to everybody ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I got to see what I can do against that story. But man, I got my work cut out for me, but we're going to see what happens right after this commercial break. Imagine that you had an amazing roommate. You hardly ever saw them. And when you opened your fridge, instead of something missing from your shelf, you found several delicious meals on it that you could make in about 30 minutes. It's time to move in with HelloFresh. Yes, it is. You can, that sounds great to me. <laughs> it does. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> no stressful meal planning. Their no contact delivery brings a box right to your door with everything you need. And you don't have to worry about them leaving dirty laundry all over the place. Oh, yeah. That's awful. The new year. It's a great time to focus on what's most important to you, whether it's saving money by ordering less takeout, learning to cook or prioritizing your wellness. HelloFresh is here to help. I had one of my vegetarian favorites this month, black bean and poblano flautas with guacamole, pico de gallo, and sour cream. I even shared some with my roommate slash wife. Oh, lucky roommate. <laughs> <laughs> you lucky you feeder. I'm nice. HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal. 
of the exact same quality. Go to HelloFresh.com slash CrimeAfterCrime16 and use code CrimeAfterCrime16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Listen to Danielle. She knows what she's talking mm-hmm. about. Go to HelloFresh.com slash CrimeAfterCrime16 and use code CrimeAfterCrime16 for up to 16 free meals and get three free gifts on top of it. What do they have to do? Go to HelloFresh already. <laughs> Try America's number one roommate, I mean, meal kit right now. Welcome back, everybody. Honestly, I think that HelloFresh is the perfect situation for roommates. So if you have a roommate, I feel like there's, how do people deal with food? Like, since I've never yeah. had a roommate, I just, I've never understood that. Oh, so no, you have to have like, this is your shelf. This is my yeah. shelf. Don't touch anything. Oh, but wait, I want to use some milk. Oh, wait, all the milk is gone. Like, it's, I know. Yeah, it's and then if you're if you're making your separate meals and stuff, that can be too much. So I feel like if you have a roommate, try HelloFresh out. You know, you guys can I think you can get like three meals a week. You can get more than that if you want. But that's like the baseline and like swap off cooking. Yeah. You or know? cook them and, together. Yeah. Cook like, what it a together. Team builder. Take like a time, you know, to build your relationship here. And it also you keeps go. you from getting super overwhelmed with a million different meals in your fridge. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's um, a really good roommate option. It does. It does sound like a good roommate option. But Danielle, the commercial's over. What are you doing? I just love HelloFresh. I know. I know you do. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do too. I'm probably on like my 180th box now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm back. I'm a little nervous. To be honest with you. I'm a little nervous. You might. I'm uh, nervous. You have beat me repeatedly. <sighs> I already told you I'm packing my mug up. Okay. I don't need it anymore because you just keep whooping me. <laughs> I got to loosen it up. See what we can do here. <laughs> we do some stretches. Uh, Danielle, the story I'm going to tell you, I like to call the queen of mistakes. My story also starts in 2017. Brianna Brochu Mm. was on the path to her dreams. At 18 years old, she had finally graduated from Lewis Mills High School in Burlington, Connecticut, and she earned a $20,000 per year, four-year college scholarship for her art. Mm. The The high school wrote about her art using her nickname, Breezy. What they said was, Breezy confessed that if you look close enough, you'll see cracks and missed glazed spots. But she decides to keep those mistakes because it adds character to her work. She identifies as being the queen of mistakes and a walking accident. But no matter how hard you take the L, you can always bounce back from a mistake, she says. (laughs) Oh boy. Yeah, now I love that whole perspective, but really it's kind of interesting they started that quote with uh, Breezy Confessed. Mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting (laughs) choice of words. Mm -hmm. Brianna was now a freshman at the University of Hartford in Connecticut, known for its programs in music, the visual arts, arts and sciences, along with electronics and engineering technology. With a strong education from a respected institution, the world would be her oyster, and she could take that scholarship winning art talent to the next level. She moved into a dorm, initially trying to find a roommate via a Facebook post, but for some reason... Seems like no one wanted to live with Brianna. Well, at least it wasn't Craigslist. At least it wasn't Craigslist. She did do one step better. We're step in a, in a better direction here. It's a better direction. But for some reason, no one wanted to live with her. So she was randomly assigned a roommate, Chanel Rowe, who goes by Jazzy. Now, Jazzy, who is African-American, graduated from Springfield Gardens High School in New York and was from Queens. But right from the start, things seemed to be less than perfect between her and Brianna. Jazzy put a good foot forward, offering to share her fridge and microwave with Brianna. See, oh, if only nice. if only they would have got HelloFresh, Danielle. Yeah, this whole, see? This whole thing would have changed. HelloFresh, well, saving the day. I know. When Brianna would go home for the weekend, Jazzy would even feed her fish. But she said that Brianna generally ignored her and treated her like a ghost. Brianna would even turn off the lights as she exited the room, even if Jazzy was still in there doing something. I genuinely wonder what's wrong with people. Uh, seriously. All right? of the time. <laughs> Poor Jazzy felt ostracized and she didn't understand why she was being treated that way. Uh, honestly, doing all the research, getting to the end of the story, I still don't know. I still don't know why she was being treated that way. Um, but there was something else going on. Jazzy was also feeling sick physically. She was having severe throat pain. 
Uh, she said, quote, I thought maybe it's because it's colder up here. I'm just probably catching a cold. Uh, she said this in a Facebook live video about this whole event, but the sore throat pain got worse and this was happening for about a month. It got to the point where I had extreme throat pain, where I couldn't sleep to the point where I couldn't speak. Like I'd try to whisper and I could barely even whisper. So she decided to visit the health services department on campus. They ran some tests. They found her negative for strep throat. She was negative for mono, but they did notice there was some type of bad bacteria that was in her throat. They prescribed her some antibiotics, which did help, but it didn't alleviate all of the symptoms. Yeah. She continued seeing doctors in her hometown of Queens. Uh, the drive back and forth, of course, started impacting her schoolwork. She's not able to make it to class all the time because she's going back for to see her doctors. As time went on and things didn't get better with Brianna, Jazzy finally requested a room change. And thankfully, that request was granted on October 17th. Jazzy started moving her stuff into her new room in a different dorm building. During that move, she was approached by a neighbor of hers and two RAs, or residence assistants. They told her about some posts that her roommate Brianna had made on social media that Jazzy might want to know about. So Brianna did some bragging on her Finsta Instagram account. Do you know what a Finsta is? Um, honestly, I have no idea. I've yeah, heard I, it, but I have not taken the time to figure out what it is. Uh, yeah, so it's it's a secondary account that's not under the person's real name. So, Oh, that's kinda, just trouble. Yeah, don't you think? <laughs> like that is literally just made to, this is like when my dad used to say, if you're out past midnight, it's, it's no not good. ever for good. Yeah, right, no, right. you're full of baloney. <laughs> This is the exact same thing. Yeah. This is a problem. So um, even though she didn't use her name, she did use her nickname, Breezy. Breezy Bumblebee is the account. And it posted several times about things that she was doing to torture her roommate. On September 8th, she posted a picture of a thermostat set at 76 degrees and wrote in the caption, Good morning from the sweat lodge, LOL when your roommate tries to cook you on the daily. Room was so hot last night, our effing windows fogged up. Hashtag Canadian sweat lodge, hashtag sauna, hashtag swamp ass. So it seems like at least here, we're seeing that Breezy is having some trouble. I guess she thinks that mm -hmm. Jazzy turned up the heat too much. Yeah, uh, and instead of talking about it, you know. Right, right. So, and that this is just the start, unfortunately. Uh, and that post was only two weeks after the girls had moved in together. Mm -hmm. the, the worst of the posts was made the day that Jazzy was actually moving out. Brianna stated that she had gotten rid of her roommate and she effectively outlined the ongoing harassment and even publicized her criminal behavior. Quote, finally did it, yo. Girl got rid of her roommate. After one and a half months of spitting in her coconut oil, putting moldy clam dip in her lotions. Now I've had to edit this next one, Danielle, because I'm trying to keep this PG rubbing used disposable feminine hygiene products on her backpack, putting her toothbrush places where the sun doesn't shine and so much more. I can finally say goodbye, Jamaican Barbie. Yeah. I hope someone fought her. <laughs> <laughs> he just That's wanted awful. to go right to fists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like immediately would have smacked her. Oh, uh, Jazzy would later say what happened is beyond ridiculous. It's something straight out of a movie. Seriously, like a bad, a bad movie. Yeah. Uh, in a shocking surprise to no one, West Hartford police arrived on campus around 1 a.m. on October 18th to reports of vandalism and harassment between two roommates course they didn't find the girls in their dorm they were sitting in the campus public safety office after jazzy had reported what brianna had claimed online as police investigated they found more allegations proof uh -huh. and even confessions from brianna why they is she were, proud of this she i swear it's like she is like someone wanted to ask her about it and all of a sudden she's just like oh well yeah i did do this i did do this i did but there's one thing she saying she didn't do which we'll get to okay. um they were shown a picture of the backpack that Jazzy owned that appeared to have a reddish You're stain serious? on it. You're serious? Oh my yeah. gosh. I've, I've seen a picture myself. It's, it's really not nice. And it was a Steve Madden bag as well. 
uh, Brianna would tell the officer uh, it was stained and it was stained using her bodily fluids that only visit so often. I'm really sorry, Danielle. You're I'm struggling. Just, I'm trying to, <laughs> you're trying. <laughs> trying to paint the picture without we're painting the picture. We're all picking up what you're throwing down. Like, okay, Don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> Um, police were shown another post with a picture of a plastic food container that contained a milky white substance in it. The caption read, like, this is moldy clam dip, and I've been mixing it with her face lotion. And the picture is gross. Uh, another post. up with that, too? Like, how do you know. think of these things? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, another post showed a photo of a weave hairpiece with Brianna commenting, this bee legit bought a box of effing hair. Now, Jazzy has uh, a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and she would review makeup and hair products. So, yeah. What? She she bought some hair appliances. So yeah, what? Well, you also legit stirred moldy right. clam dip into... <laughs> right. Like, that's not wild. But and, the fact yeah. that someone reviews hair and makeup and has these items, that's crazy to you. But what right. you're doing is totally normal. Yeah. Brianna would also admit to police that she licked Jazzy's plate, fork, and spoon and mixed her lotions with other lotions on her desk. But that one thing, when it came to the stuff she bragged about online on social media, she says, well, that was a lie in an attempt to be funny. But the weird thing is, Danielle, I read through the police report and she basically mm -hmm. admits to just about everything. Yeah. Uh, just about everything. There's one thing. And that's about the toothbrush and putting mm -hmm. it where the sun doesn't shine. And keep in mind, Jazzy is found to have a throat infection yeah. with some kind of bad bacteria that they can't identify. So yep. basically, uh, I'm pretty sure she didn't want to admit to the thing that was actually causing, causing physical harm. harm. Yeah. Right. Right. As if emotional isn't bad enough, which mm -hmm. by the way, this is severe. And Jazzy- I would be so traumatized. I can't imagine how she felt after figuring all of that out. Like that had been happening to her on a daily basis. Well, and it's bad enough to know the things that she's saying, but you don't know what she's not saying. And exactly. even in her post, she says, and so much more. So Jazzy's mind is just like, and so much more. What the heck else could she yeah, have like, been doing? How much further could you have taken this? If you admit to this stuff online, what's mm -hmm. the stuff you're not admitting to? Like, it's it's really, really scary. Um, so Jazzy stated that she believed the medical issue she was having with the bacteria in her throat was related to the tampering that Brianna was bragging about. Mm -hmm. I, th I think anyone would agree with that. Yeah. Jazzy also confirmed that her backpack, you know, the one Danielle yes, trying to, the one. Mm -hmm. uh, it was still stained. And I'm sure that police wanted to know about that so they could yeah. verify it. Um, at that point, they let Jazzy go so that she could finish moving her stuff out of the room while they continued interviewing Brianna further. So kind of gave the girls mm -hmm. some separation. When they asked Brianna why this was all happening, she said that Jazzy had created a hostile environment by being rude, not compromising, and posting Snapchat videos of Brianna sleeping and making fun of her snoring. Brianna said she also asked for a room change, but it wasn't granted. So Jazzy, even if she did, which I don't know if she did or not, mm -hmm. I, I haven't found anything to back up those that part of the story. Yeah. But even if she did, she said, oh my God, I've, I've got this roommate who snores all the time. So that's why you're going to launch this type of attack and terrorize this person? like Yeah, it's... like physically make her ill. Yeah. And... <sighs> you really missed out on not having a roommate, Danielle, let me just say. but uh... John, <laughs> let me just tell you. <laughs> Had uh, any of these things happened to me? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. wouldn't end well. Mm-hmm. So, uh... Both girls had to sign no contact agreements, but unfortunately that wasn't the end of all this. Jazzy was frustrated with the lack of follow-up from the school. Yeah. She was told she, yeah. And she was told she might not hear anything back on the case at all. She was also told by school staff that she couldn't speak publicly about what happened or she could be kicked off the residential side of campus altogether. You're joking. Nope. But Jazzy. She wouldn't tolerate it. So she Good. did a Facebook Live, like a two-hour Facebook Live, where she just opened up and went into everything. Good for her. Here's a little quote from some of it. Uh, Colleges are known to just sweep issues that happen within the campus under the rug, making the issue disappear and not doing anything about it. 
I'm not holding my tongue any longer about my situation because this is just ridiculous to hear nothing back. As an African-American woman, I have to fight for myself and others to not become some statistic. I feel like me as a black person and her being a white person, if I'm the woman who committed all these crimes, this would have been completely different. There were so many crimes committed that she openly posted, I would have been locked up already. They would have had no hesitation, cuffed me and taken me away. I'm just so aggravated. I mean, that's a health hazard. It's... Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... how... I'm not understanding. <laughs> it's a I just sustained here, attack. Like, tripping up. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it's just like kind of quietly like, oh, don't, oh, don't say anything. Don't tell anyone. Like, how are you going to take a victim like that and then threaten to kick them off of campus? That should never they, happen. That yeah. is absurd. It is. It absurd. really is. Now, I don't know because um, I, I couldn't quite get the timing of when all this stuff was happened. I wouldn't be surprised if her Facebook kind of testimony helped. Mm -hmm push some of this stuff because uh pretty soon it seems like the wheels are turning in the background uh Good. officers applied for an arrest warrant on brianna it was granted on october 26th uh brianna turned herself in on october 28th and she was charged with second degree breach of breach of peace third degree criminal mischief those are both misdemeanors which carry a mm -hmm. maximum sentence of six months each but as the case hit the news and went viral across the nation, because oh boy, did it once yeah, really, the story it got out. Everywhere. Yeah, uh, another consideration with another serious charge came into play. West Hartford police responded to outcries from the public and the NAACP that started looking into an additional charge of intimidation based on bigotry or bias, which is yep. a second degree felony with a potential sentence of one to five years in prison. Well, after all the lovely names that she threw out there, I'm sure hoping they accomplish that. Yeah, yeah. Now there's, we'll, we'll get to it. There's a consideration about the name, but uh, the intimidation law states a person is guilty of intimidation based on bigotry or bias in the second degree when such person maliciously and with specific intent to intimidate or harass another person because of the actual or perceived race, religion, ethnicity, disability, sexual orientation, or gender identity or expression of such other person does any of the following. Number one, causes physical contact with such other person, which you're licking my fork and yeah. spoons mm -hmm. and plates and doing whatever with my toothbrush. I'm pretty sure you breached that. Yeah. Uh, number two, damages, destroys, or defaces any real or personal property of such other person. All I have to say there is backpack. Yep. Uh, or number three, even threatens to do an act described in one or two. So you don't even have to actually do it, you just have to threaten. Mm -hmm. The important consideration and all that is really at the start, it has to be based on uh, the bigotry or bias. So how do you prove, yeah, that, how do you prove that? that motivation is there? Um, so the West Hartford Police, they passed that recommendation on to the state attorney's office and the public would keep demanding that additional charge, holding several protests and uh, demanding hashtag justice for Jazzy. Brianna's case was moved up to Superior Court due to the severity of the allegations, and then she was released on bail. It was only $1,000, which I was like, what the heck? Um, on October 31st, the president of the University of Hartford, Greg Woodward, said, let me be clear that I'm confident the university has taken all steps to pursue this matter seriously and will continue to do so. So we've got them kind of commenting on this as well. Um, on November 1st, the university announced that Brianna was no longer a student at their campus, and Woodward stated she'll not be returning to this institution, though it's unknown if she was actually expelled. I saw some articles that were like, yeah, she was expelled, and others were like, no, we're not positive she was actually expelled. But and they probably wouldn't have even done any of that to, of that to begin with had that live not been made. They wanted to keep it quiet and... Yeah, I think the live really pushed things forward. And he even kind of comments so. in some ways where you're like, is he talking about the fact that Jazzy spoke out about this? Um, but uh, I'm not even 100% sure that she was actually expelled because her conditions for her bail included that she was barred from the campus. So just part of her being out on bail, she couldn't go back to the campus anyway. Yeah. Uh, he did try to address Jazzy's concerns, stating, The university strictly and swiftly followed all procedural and legal processes related to this alleged event. 
Claims to the contrary are based on misinformation. Uh, he also said, I've also met with the affected student and we are in communication with her family. We will continue to offer support and assistance to her as well as any other students that feel threatened, victimized, or uncomfortable mm -hmm. on our campus. Of course, this did start things where they were having meetings with other students on campus and starting to have discussions. And I can tell you, based on the comments I was seeing from him as that whole process was going on, he was pretty surprised by some of the stuff he was hearing about. And it sounds like they... Uh, I don't. You never know if those things are really going to get addressed, but yeah. there were certainly some big issues being brought Lots to their of attention. Problems, yeah. So, of course, on November first, uh, twenty seventeen, when this information comes out, the internet just explodes with this story, and a lot of that explosion uh, came to everyone involved in it. Jazzy's Facebook video hit five hundred thousand views. Brianna started receiving threats, as did the University of Hartford president Gregory Woodward. The conversation would even reach the governor's office with their team releasing a statement. Uh, governor Malloy strongly condemns these alleged heinous acts and shares concern for the young woman who was the victim of these heinous acts. It's so weird that they phrase it like this. Like on one side of the conversation, they're like, this is an alleged act. But then when they're talking about Jazzy's perspective, you know, like, oh, she's she's a victim of these heinous acts. It's like, well, yeah, they don't know what they're. Yeah flip-flopping yeah like are you admitting that this happened or not because yeah. you're trying to in one way and not in the other but it's like the whole time they're just trying to please everyone they possibly can right right uh there this is no place for discrimination hate crimes or bullying in our society much less in our places of education um so addressing that potential third charge and the whole racism mm -hmm. angle brianna did an interview a few weeks later and in it she said i'm not racist I don't want to be seen as this hated person because I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm just kidding, Danielle. I added some of those I'm nots, but I thought I was they about fit. to say, I feel like <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like. I mean, she's 18 years old. I get it. But um, her attorney, Tom Stevens, would say that nothing she did was actually motivated by Jazzy's race. Quote, I think when it's all said and done, you're going to see that there was nothing racist that motivated this. These were two students who were placed together who didn't like each other, and it escalated. Now, you're right about that one comment, and I've yeah. been pretty concerned about it too. Brianna claims that the Jamaican Barbie reference is actually an acknowledgement of the name that Jazzy gives herself on social media, namely on Twitter and YouTube. She had accounts on both of those reportedly called It's Jaws Barbie. Okay. Well. Yeah. You know, it does change it a little bit. And I yeah. did see one of the YouTube videos for myself. She does refer to herself as Jaws Barbie. Um, on December 18th, with justice for Jazzy protesters outside of the courthouse. By the way, uh, yeah, it might justify that part of it. None of this act. I mean, none of what's going on here. And quite honestly, yeah. it, it could still be racially motivated. Oh just, yeah, you don't, absolutely. You don't, have to, you don't have to throw a name out, but it's just in terms of proving it. Well, that's that kind would of irritating. It's just irritating to me because how do you expect anyone to prove it when you? It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's the like activity saying, is so blatant. The, yeah. the actual actions are so blatant that like how? Yeah. It's one of those where it feels like they created that to appease people, knowing it would be so difficult to actually prove that's, you that know, law. yeah, yeah, it yeah. pisses me off. <laughs> yeah. On December 18th, with justice for jazzy protesters outside the courthouse, prosecutors made their big decision about that extra charge. Guess what? Nope. Didn't Figured file it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Justice for jazzy supporters were extremely upset. Hartford State Attorney um, Gail Hardy told the Associated Press, we don't have evidence to support that the conduct that Brianna Brochu engaged in was committed to intimidate or harass Miss Rowe because of her perceived race or ethnicity. Jazzy told a publication, I feel the court system at the end of the day only protects their own and not all of us in America. About a month later, Brianna's lawyer would apply for an accelerated rehabilitation program. Because why not, right, Danielle? And in March of 2018, it was granted Brianna would have to serve 200 hours of community service and stay out of trouble for two years, and her record would be completely wiped clean. She would also have to submit to a mental health evaluation. 
Jazzy spoke at the hearing, saying that she was traumatized, had nightmares, and difficulty trusting others. She also said the experience delayed her educational goals, but in a turn of classiness that I didn't expect and honestly Brianna doesn't deserve, she also said, quote, by giving her the second chance, I hope she will change her ways and find love for all mankind, no matter what race. Good for her. Now, did Brianna ever apologize? Sort of. Her lawyer apologized on her behalf and said that he actually directed her not to because he was concerned about possible civil litigation, which, by the way, why didn't? Like, I'm really surprised that Jazzy's family didn't fire up some civil suit on this. Go that she way. may have just been so traumatized and done with it that she wanted so. nothing to do with it anymore. You I know, so. I wouldn't want to yeah. have to deal with someone that acted like that, that continued to make it seem like what they did was all right and like happily spoke about it. Yeah. Yeah. And ultimately, what, what would happen with the civil suit? Like they would file yeah. it. And, you know, if uh, Brianna's family has a bunch of money, they would just there'd be some type of payout. None mm-hmm. of that is going to help anything. Yep. Um, so but. The judge that was seeing all of this over, Judge Williams, made a great point stating that even with Brianna's criminal record effectively wiped clean, friends, potential employers, romantic partners, and even her future children would likely become aware of what Brianna had done if they did what we talked about in your story, just a simple internet search on her name. Yep. And he's right, because a quick search on her name right now shows that- Ebony Magazine and the New York Post refer to Brianna as the roommate from hell. Yep. (laughs) It's very fitting. The judge stated, quote, the Internet has a long memory and you will have to do a lot of good to live down these allegations. You can let this case define you or bury it beneath your accomplishments. Mm hmm. Thank you, New York Times, NBC News, Heavy.com, WFSB, WTNH, Karat, IBTimes.UK, Boston Globe, and Wikipedia for information contributing to today's story. Everyone it's so on weird. the internet that yeah. <laughs> jumped on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, yep. I mean, going through the research, it was like, oh, it's the same article I'm seeing 500 times yep. all on November 1st. But there was a lot of good reporting around that. And in particular by Heavy. Heavy did some really good reporting on this. Heavy usually does a pretty good job. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's weird to me, Danielle, that it, they're seeing these allegations as so serious. They send it to superior court. Mm-hmm. But then effectively, they wind up treating it like it's a juvenile case. Like oh, they tr- absolutely. They treated it like she was 14 years old. Yep. She, she was 18. You know, it's just, I don't know. I feel like this is a big lesson learned to many, hopefully, because, you know, again, when I went to college, I didn't go straight to a university. I started off at a community college. And so I never uh, even had a roommate there. You know, I was never in a dorm situation, but I never understood why anyone thought it was a great idea to place a bunch of young, new adults in a mm-hmm. situation where they're also experiencing that level of freedom for the first time, you know, coming into who they are and how they treat people, there's a sense of like, I can do whatever I want. When you throw a bunch of people together like that, it is bound to be an absolute disaster because you've got a bunch of people that probably know better, but also have this level of just. You want to not, test your boundaries yeah. and learn and yeah, no, I get it. I get it. And so I feel like there's got to be something better implemented, you know, to make things work a little bit better and make sure people stay safe. Well, because you know, I mean, that's, that's why they got RAs, you know, they've got the RAs that are there. They're yeah. supposed to be watching this stuff go down. And um, but it's just this was also very rapid. I mean, yeah. they only lived together for I think it was less than two months. So this was a really quick acceleration. Yep. Um, but yeah, just it's it's terrible on on a lot of fronts. And I, I'm, I'm never going to be able to forget about that backpack, unfortunately, especially after seeing no, a picture of it. Not at um, all. <clears throat> How uh, does someone wake up every day and think that something like that's acceptable to do and funny? Well, it, that's the other thing. Like there's this aspect of the social media um, trying to do things for attention yep. that I feel like is coming into play here. Mm-hmm. Like maybe 
her first couple posts, it was kind of simple and like, oh, I'm putting, you know, I'm spitting in her yeah. lotion or whatever. And then maybe it kind of grew into a life of its own. Like maybe she noticed that, oh, I got a few likes on that. Oh, yeah. wow. I got to do this again. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. But I I do agree with Jazzy and I just I hope she learned her lesson. And I really love yeah, how the too. judge phrased it. You know, Brianna is going to have to do a lot of good in this world to mm -hmm. overshadow those articles because there is a lot of those articles yeah people are going to remember that that's never going to go away she yeah. you know she may not have been punished in the way some people believe she should have but she is punished in the sense that she has to live with herself yeah so you know and she has no choice but to make good decisions from this point on or yeah. that's her life you know you, wrapped you, up in a bow just yeah, you've Bad. also got the the court of public opinion out here. Too, yeah, exactly. So. Ooh, and that is something serious. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we are obviously running long this episode, so we're going to do some extra stories, but we're going to trim them down to just okay. two. So, uh, Danielle, let's get it started with you. Now, this one I actually chose because I was very familiar with Brianna's story, and it's pretty much very, it's very similar. Also, in 2017, Tierney Williams' roommate started to become inexplicably sick she couldn't eat she was rapidly dropping weight overall felt awful and despite numerous doctor's appointments waiting weeks or you know to get better she never could really get to the bottom of what was causing her to be so sick she had no appetite it was a very scary situation until similar to brianna's story she saw a disturbing snapchat that had been filmed by williams the video showed williams using a cup of water or a cup to get water from the toilet bowl and then filling up her water bottle with it, her roommate's oh. water bottle. And so she had been drinking toilet water for who knows how long. All the while, her roommate's laughing while doing it, saying, oh, she's going to get so sick from this. Wow. Obviously, in horror, this was reported to police. And this is very interesting. I'm surprised this wasn't on yours, but Williams ended up being arrested and charged with adulteration of food or liquid with bodily injury. Mm, mm, that's an interesting charge. Mm -hmm. Wow. Serve any time? Toilet water. I yeah. couldn't find out exactly what happened with that, but. Yeah, I know some of those ooh, stories, they just yeah, kind of end it comes the and details. goes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, here, just a quick tip for anyone that's planning on having a roommate do not mix poop and your roommate. Yeah. In any way. Mm -hmm. Those those are things that should not come across each other. I also had this weird feeling of like you're like you're licking forks and spoons and stuff. Like, like aren't you worried about yourself at all in this? Yeah. Like what's motivating that exactly? Like I'm in some ways I'm wondering like are you like infatuated with this other person? Yes. Like, that's what it, it seems like. Yeah. There's just there's 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 a mental component there that needs to be looked at and understood better. Yeah. Um. Let me try to lighten everything here with our final mm -hmm. story. Let's 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 see if it gets any better, Danielle. But quite okay. honestly, it, it might not. Oh no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. We'll, we'll talk about a nice roommate. That's how we'll do it. All right. Okay. Some roommates can be really nice, like Nils Nutrid, a Penn State student that moved in with an, another couple students, but that mm -hmm. couple was dating, right? So uh, Nils, he gave them a sweet Christmas present. Blu-ray player, brand new Blu-ray player, even awesome. in, installed it in their bedroom for them That's without, nice. without their asking. But, you know, he installed it in their bedroom <laughs> at the perfect angle, you know, right in front of their bed. Yeah. Every, every now and then Nils would actually borrow the Blu-ray player from them. And sometimes without asking. Uh, about six months into all this, the couple became suspicious. Like, hey, what, what's up with this Blu-ray player like disappearing every now and then? Uh, they decided to take a look at the Blu-ray player a little more closely, and when they cracked it open, they found out it had a camera, microphone, and hard drive in it. The police found dozens of videos or images of the roommates in various states of undress and doing things that young couples in their bedroom often do. Nils pled guilty to one felony count of intercepting communications, and he was sentenced to two years probation for his dirty little Blu-ray player. I'm so scared of everybody. Isn't that terrible? I don't trust anyone. A gift. <laughs> like, these things aren't even happening to me, and I'm over here panicking. <laughs> <laughs> How 
awful. Oh, well, how slimy. Yeah. So he's borrowing it so he could basically empty yeah, the memory like, oh, out. Yeah, he's like, let me download this. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those thin walls. I heard what was happening the other night. Yeah. I better get the Blu-ray player. I know. Forget thin walls. I'll just put a camera in there. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I would be so, I would feel so violated. Could you imagine? Yeah. No, that's really, really terrible. This really, is really why terrible. I will I can't do it. I don't get how people do this. I think also, but I, well, you know, but I also feel like when you're in true crime, you're not necessarily paranoid, but you think a lot of things through and you always see what could possibly happen. And I feel like that maybe has some reason or something to do with why I I have never had a roommate because this is the kind of stuff that I'm for sure would happen to me. (laughs) That's so scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if, yeah, if your new roommate gives you something, maybe, yeah, think twice about putting it in your bedroom. (laughs) <laughs> i'm gonna you email you at like midnight tonight and be like i've gone through my entire home <laughs> right. like i have zero reason to be worried at all <laughs> like i'm literally with my family but i'm yeah. so scared let me be like yeah. the amazon driver before they delivered my package <laughs> there you go you <laughs> i'm never gonna just know. Be, be waking out about everything <laughs> don't trust them <laughs> well you guys this was a doozy of an episode mm-hmm. who's gonna win this month those were two absolutely ridiculous stories You guys get to vote who told the best world's worst roommate story. (laughs) Yeah, the best worst. Yeah, the best worst. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And you can vote over on our Twitter account at Crime After Pod. You can vote there for the first seven days after the episode drops. Or you can also head over to www.crimeaftercrimepodcast.com and you can vote there. We also have a link in the description box below. Or you can also still click the little letter I up in the corner to take you to the website to vote. At CrimeAfterCrimePodcast.com, you could find all the links you'll ever need, including where to find more content by Danielle or myself, how to suggest show topics, join our Patreon, or shop our Teespring store. And speaking of Patreon, huge thank you to our patrons. Patreon is where it's at. I'm just saying right now, <laughs> you guys get a bonus Patreon special segment monthly, plus you get a personal shout out and an upcoming Patreon special. It's really and fun over there. We've added a new feature, which is Danielle's farm update, which yes. has been happening the past several months. It's something else. It's pretty fun. Yeah. It's you something wanna, else. You want to hear what's happening. <laughs> uh, next episode, several of you actually wound up suggesting this. Thank you guys so much for the suggestions you kick in. Nude crimes, Danielle. Crimes that involve nudity in some way. Maybe it's someone running away while they're naked. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a charge actually related to being naked. I don't know. It just has to do with nudity. There's no telling where this path is going to lead us, but something tells me it will lead us to Florida. <laughs> and Danielle, as soon and as... <laughs> and Walmart. Go there and buy a new Blu-ray player. And set it up in your bedroom. <laughs> 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 this show is produced and hosted by myself danielle hallen and the amazing john lorden if you enjoyed today's episode please rate or review us on whatever platform you found us on and the best way you can help others find us is to tell your friends tell your family tell everyone that you love crime after crime and that crime after crime loves you big virtual hug that's right <laughs> And finally, Happy New Year. Year. Have a great one, everyone. We'll see you again on February 1st. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.